Alright, welcome back to the third and last video of this project, making the digital clock. So this video is going to go over making it keep time properly, then we'll create a couple touch buttons to be able to set the time and interact with the clock, and then we'll try to make it so we can set the brightness. To keep track of time, we can take advantage of the alternating current in the mains line. This is because not only the frequency in any given moment is kept very close to the nominal 50 Hz, but also the frequency on an average long period of time is very close to the nominal value. So the time deviation uh, is always going to be very close to zero. To take advantage of this, I'm going to modify the wall adapter that I'll use anyway to power the clock to create a square wave with a frequency of 50 Hz. And then with the Arduino, we can uh, divide this frequency into a 1 Hz or 2 Hz signal that can drive the clock. This is the simplified schematic of the wall adapter. If we take one of the two outputs of the transformer, this is going to give us a more or less sinusoidal wave. And then we can create a very simple amplifier so that it clips this uh, signal and essentially creates a square wave. Here you can see I created the circuit and the output is very clean. All I have to do now is feed the signal to a pin of the Arduino with an external interrupt enabled. This way, 50 times a second, an interrupt routine will be called that updates the time. Now let's take a look at the touch sensor. The basic idea is that when we touch the button or pad that's on top of the clock, uh, we will increase the capacitance that it has towards ground. So to detect this uh, change in capacitance, all we have to do is create a circuit like this. Here you can see on the left we have what's inside of the Arduino, a simplified version of it. And on the right is a capacitor, which is uh, actually, it's not a component, it's just a stray capacitance towards ground that can vary when we touch it with our finger. And then we will add a one mega ohm resistor between that and the ground. I recommend not going under one mega ohms. And here you can see on the left, we have the data direction register. This is what determines if the output is enabled or in high impedance mode. The port XN determines what value the pin has when it's in output mode. And then the pin X register has the value of the pin when it's reading it in input. To measure the capacitance on the pin here, all we have to do is first thing we enable as output the pin and we write it to logic one, so five volts. And this will obviously quickly charge this stray capacitance. The next thing is we uh, make the pin an input, so it will go in high impedance mode. This is essentially like disconnecting it. And at this point, the capacitance will discharge through the one mega ohm resistor. At the same time, we will be checking repeatedly what the value in the pin X register is. And as soon as it goes to zero, this means that the capacitor will be mostly discharged. The time that this takes will define roughly how large the stray capacitance is. All we have to do then is check if the time passed is more or less than a set amount that we can determine uh, by testing it and that will tell us if someone's touching the pad or not. I use the direct register access to make it a lot faster. The last functionality that I want to add to this clock is a variable brightness and this is going to be actually very easy to do because we have control of the output enable of the shift registers that are controlling the LEDs. So if we feed a PWM signal to this we can effectively change the brightness of it. Now for the Arduino code. I'm not going to go through all of it and explain it just because it's a little bit long and I think this video will just get stretched out too much. But if you want to copy it or copy parts from it, I am perfectly happy. So I'm just going to show it here on the screen. Unfortunately, I don't have a GitHub account that you can download it from. Well, I guess this wraps up the whole video. Here you can see basically me setting the time 
and then setting the brightness. I want to thank everyone for watching the video till the end. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave them in the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching. You can subscribe if you want to see the future videos. And uh, see you in the next one.